Variable Z is a powerful feature that lets Pro Tools Carbon users change the feel and tone of either direct recorded guitar and bass or different microphones. This lets you truly experience the feel and vibe of a sound or mood you're striving to achieve. Back in 2009, Avid released 11 Rack, a versatile guitar-centric USB interface. One of its defining features was True Z, a combination hardware-software input solution that allowed you to change the impedance of the guitar input to mimic the front-end hardware being emulated, whether it was a particular stomp box or a tube amp. With the introduction of Carbon, Avid is taking that concept and expanding on it, giving you variable Z on several of the mic and instrument inputs. Let's take a closer look at what Variable Z is and how to use it in some different scenarios. Variable Z lets you change the impedance of the instrument inputs on the front panel or mic inputs 5 to 8 on the rear panel, depending on what your input or processing needs are. This is achieved with switchable resistive loads on these physical inputs. The front panel instrument inputs have five different color-coded settings. There's one mega ohm, white, 230 kilo ohms cyan, 90 kilo ohms blue, 72 kilo ohms violet, and 32 kilo ohms fuchsia. These affect the tone and feel, matching the impedances of different guitar amps and effects hardware. This allows you to experiment and see which setting works best with your effects chain, or gives you the best tonal complement to the material being recorded. As a guide, the tones at higher settings are brighter with a little more level and get progressively darker at the lower value settings. The rear panel 5 to 8 mic inputs have three different settings that are color coded and switchable from the Carbon 8 front panel. These are 5 kilo ohms white, 50 kilo ohms cyan, and 1 kilo ohm fuchsia. This is particularly useful when switching between different types of microphones such as ribbon, dynamic, or condenser. So let's first look at how to use Variable Z when recording guitar and bass directly. In our first example, let's plug an electric guitar into Carbon's instrument input 1 and set the level. In Pro Tools, we'll set the input to Mic Instrument 1 and set the channel to DSP mode. We can now open a track preset with the exact chain of plugins we want for this performance. Now that we have the chain loaded, we see that the first plugin in the chain is a drive pedal. Using the default setting of 1 meg seems a little brighter than the sound we are going for. Overdrive pedals in the physical world typically have an input impedance of anywhere between 200k and 500k. So let's set the variable Z setting to 230k. Now we have a sound that is more like what we would expect with the actual hardware. Our second example is with a bass guitar plugged into instrument input 2. In Pro Tools, we set this record track to mic instrument 2 and enable DSP mode. Our track preset has the bass going into the 11.2 amp plugin, simulating an Ampeg SVT bass amp. Bass and guitar tube amplifiers like this usually have a 1 mega ohm input impedance, so the default setting is probably best for this scenario. Let's switch through the other variable Z settings to see what they sound like. We hear that the bass gets darker and a little lower in level at the other settings. This might work in some instances, but for what we're looking for, the original value of 1 meg is a much better choice. Now let's see how you can use Variable Z when recording with microphones. In this example we have a pair of Royer R10 ribbon microphones that we are going to use to record some percussion in stereo. The mics are connected to mic inputs 5 and 6 on the back panel of the Carbon interface. We can link their controls together from the front panel so making any changes affects both channels. On the stereo track in Pro Tools we have mic 5 6 selected and DSP mode enabled to give us the lowest monitoring latency when recording. There's a compressor on the track we are monitoring through to help to tame the transients. The default variable Z setting of 5K is not ideal for ribbon mics as they typically want to see an input impedance in the 1K to 2K range. So we can switch the variable Z setting to 1K to better match this microphone to the mic preamp. You can see from these examples how powerful Variable Z is at creating the best possible sound and feel to keep performers at the centre of the creative process. For more information and other videos, visit the Pro Tools Carbon page on avid.com.